What's up ladies and gents, welcome back to another video. So that Nintendo Direct, let's talk about that Direct, that thing was incredible, it was amazing, I loved every single minute of it, uh, almost every single minute of it, um, but I wanted just to make a quick little video here just kind of talking about my thoughts on everything that was revealed, everything that was talked about, and just everything that I enjoyed about this awesome Nintendo Direct. Um, I feel like this is one of the better Directs that Nintendo has done. Uh, just in terms of quality and quantity, we had so many announcements, so many amazing games be uh, revealed and, and just kind of learn a little bit more about games we already knew about, and it was just such a great, great Direct, and I absolutely loved it. Um, so I'll just kind of talk a little bit about uh, a lot of the things that I myself am really excited for. I have a list of about six games here. Um, and these are just the ones that I'm really excited for. Um, there's, you know, of course I'm really excited for, like, the Final Fantasy games coming over, um, different things like that. I'm really excited for those. Um, but the, the ones that I'm going to talk about here are the ones that I am definitely getting day one. Um, so I, yeah, so we'll, we'll just go ahead and jump right into it. Um, actually, before we do that, I do want to just kind of mention that I did download the demos for Yoshi's Crafted World as well as Damon X Machina. Um, Yoshi's Crafted World looks incredible, and I love how it plays. I think it's going to be a fantastic game. It reminds me a lot of Yoshi's Woolly World. Um, I do think that uh, Woolly World had a little... Uh, the controls in Woolly World were a little bit tighter. Um, it seems like in Crafted World, it seems like uh, there's kind of a delay, like when you are, you know, when you make Yoshi move and you stop, uh, he kind of still moves just a tad. Whereas I think in Woolly World, he kind of stopped on a dime. Like as soon as you stop moving the control stick, he stopped as well. Um, something I noticed, not really a big deal, but again, something that uh, that I just kind of observed from my time with the demo. But aside from that, I absolutely love Crafted World. I think it's going to be a great. Uh, addition to the Switch library this year, and I'm really excited that it's coming out next month. Uh, I love the whole idea that you can, you know, go through the stage again, but on the flip side, and just everything about the stage is a little bit different. It's still the same stage, but because you're looking at it from a different perspective, uh, you know, the the obviously the stage is going to change. So that's very cool. Like I really enjoyed that a lot. And I also like how it's not just a straight, you know, 2D platformer, of course, you know, it, it is essentially, but there's those areas where you can kind of go um, into the background, you know, and then you can also kind of go in the foreground, uh, different things like that. There's one area in the demo where you have to find parts to a train, and you're in like this little uh, square area with just a bunch of, you know, different buildings and things like that. And you can, you know, go in the buildings, you can... Uh, walk out of them, you can kind of go around the center area, which I thought was really cool. And, um, you know, we've seen gameplay of it, but it was something that I didn't really fully comprehend until I played it. And so I think that's really awesome, and I'm really excited to get my hands on the, uh, on the full game. I think it's going to be great. Uh, Damon X Machina, a very, very solid demo. Um, very fun. There's going to be... Uh, this is going to be a, uh, a fairly substantial game, I think. Um, just with all of the customization options you got for customizing your arsenal, uh, not just visually, but with, with different weapons and abilities and things like that, as well as your pilot uh, yourself as well, you know, I think it's going to be very cool. Um, the missions are awesome as well, lots of different uh, object objectives that you have to do, you know, take out all these different enemies, uh, protect this giant structure. Uh, I think it's great, and I really am glad that the uh, developers are asking for feedback on the game. Um, it just shows that they do care that, you know, that they want to make this project the best that it can possibly be. Um, one gripe I do kind of have with Damon X Machina right now is that the frame rate can be um, a little poor <laughs> at times. Not anything that's unplayable, but it's definitely noticeable. Um, almost seems like it can kind of be below 30 frames per second here and there. Um, so if they could maybe find a way to get that frame rate just up just a little bit, it doesn't have to be a full 60, I don't really care about, you know, obviously 60 frames per second are great, but for me it doesn't have to be, you know, 60 exactly, but just something a little bit higher I think would be really good. I think it would just add a little bit more to the experience, but if not, if, you know, they can't get that for some reason, you know, it's not a big deal. I'm still going to buy the game day one. I'm still really enjoying it. The demo was a lot of fun. 
Um, it, it's just going to be great. I'm really excited for that game as well. So it was really great to have those two demos released yesterday. Uh, you know, I got home from class last night and I downloaded them and played them for a bit. And uh, it was very fun, very fun. So those two games, really looking forward to them and really glad we got to play the demo for those games as well. So moving on, uh, the games that I'm really the most excited for. Uh, the first one, they kicked the show off with this and everything that I saw was just absolutely incredible, and that is Super Mario Maker 2. Um, I talked about this in my video yesterday, just kind of talking about my predictions of what they could show in the Direct, and they started the show off with Super Mario Maker 2. Uh, most notably, they started out with Slopes, we're Slope Boys up in this, <laughs> it's very cool, very cool to see that. Um, they are just adding so much content into Super Mario Maker 2, they're making this game even bigger and better than it was before. Um, you know, we've got a bunch of different assets from, you know, Super Mario World, Super Mario Bros. 3. They're adding Super Mario 3D World assets, which was, I did not expect at all. So, you know, you've got the, the bell trees and, you know, the cat power-ups and the clear pipes. Um, some stuff from New Super Mario Brothers with, like, the moving ice platforms. Um, just a ton of things that they're adding, and they're making it so much bigger and better than the first game was. And... What's really crazy is it's coming out in June. <laughs> like, that's nuts. That's insane. Um, so I'm very excited for that. I think that's going to be like their big E3 game, you know, kind of the game that they're uh, promoting the most around E3. And I feel like they're going to do um, like some tournaments or um, just heavily showcasing Super Mario Maker 2 because it is such a big game. And I'm really glad that it's, it, it's not just a port, it's a full blown sequel. I'm really glad that uh, they're doing that as well, because Super Mario Maker was one of the most unique games that I've ever played. And it was, you know, of course on the Wii U, and it was a shame that nobody really got to experience it that much because the Wii U install base was so low, and it did kind of come out kind of late in the Wii U's li lifetime. So having Super Mario Maker on a system that is doing so well, that is so hot right now, I think that's just going to drive <laughs> Super Mario Maker fame even further. And I cannot wait to see what people create, I cannot wait to play levels, I cannot wait to create my own levels. Um, I think I mentioned yesterday I watch a lot of Mario Maker YouTubers and I'm just getting all, you know, different kinds of ideas um, from, you know, the game and things like that. Just from watching them and, and seeing how they play and seeing what other people create. So the possibilities are endless. Mario Maker is a game with endless replayability and basically unlimited content um, so it's gonna be insane to see what people do with it but yes Mario Maker 2 so excited for that cannot wait um, next we sh we uh, received a lot of information on Dragon Quest 11 s the definitive edition which is kind of a mouthful but hey whatever um, cannot wait for this as well I've been toying with the idea of getting the ps4 version uh, because it looks so good and I really want to play it and I'm kind of glad that I held off because it looks like there's going to be so much more to the Switch version than the PS4 version which is kind of crazy to think about um, just so many different things that they talked about um, you know full orchestral um, pieces of you know some of the music uh, switching from 16-bit you know art style to the you know HD art style that's a really nice touch I think that's something that a lot of Especially longtime fans are really going to enjoy. Uh, that looks very cool to me. Um, I'm actually not really a longtime <laughs> Dragon Quest fan. This is actually going to be my first Dragon Quest game that I ever play. But it just looks incredible. It looks so good. Um, I think the port that they, the, the the job that they did porting this game to the Switch, I think, is very good as well. So this is going to de definitely going to be a huge RPG for uh, the Switch later this year. Uh, I was kind of hoping it would be out a little bit sooner, but uh, honestly, not too big of a deal. So I think that's going to be great. So Dragon Quest XI S, the definitive, the, the definitive edition, you get what I'm saying, is going to be cool. Uh, moving on, Oninaki from Tokyo RPG, Tokyo Fact, what is it? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the from the developers that made I Am Satsuna and Lost Fear. Lost Sphere. I'm so sorry. I cannot talk today. I'm just so hyped about all these announcements. Um, this is more, looks like more of an action RPG, uh, whereas I Am Setsuna and Lost Sphere were, um, I guess, action in a sense, but I think more turn based as well. Um, but this game looks incredible. It looks so good. I love the art style. It has a different look. Uh, it still looks like a Topio RPG Factory game. 
but the art style in this does look very different from Ansetsuna and Lost Sphere. So that looks very cool. I think it's going to be a great game. Very much looking forward to that. Um, I've talked many times before about how I'm really enjoying RPGs a lot more recently, and I love that the Switch is getting a ton of RPGs. I think it's going to be fantastic. So Oninaki, very cool. I believe that comes out in this summer, so that will be a great time to play that game. Very excited for that. Uh, and just the whole concept looks cool too, uh, so it, it's going to be great, so I'm very excited. Um, so moving on, the big one was Fire Emblem Three Houses. Um, I was hoping that this would release in April, but or like April or May, but it's not coming until July, late July, which kind of sucks a little bit. But they did say that, uh, you know, they did have to push the game back, and, you know, that's understandable. Uh, sometimes you will, you know, unfortunately have to do that, but uh, not a big deal. But we did get a ton of information on that. You can actually, you know, they, they talked about who the three houses were, um, some of the the uh, essential characters within those three houses and all those different kinds of things. Talked a little bit about the, uh, the combat, uh, the characters, the story, all that good stuff. And it looks solid. I, I'm really excited for Fire Emblem as well. Um, I have seen people kind of complain that they think it looks like a 3DS game but upscaled. Um, I don't think it's the greatest looking game in the world, but I don't think it looks terrible. Uh, it has its own art style, it has its own sort of flair, it has its own identity, and I think it will be perfect on the Switch. I think it looks like a Switch game, I think it is uh, going to please a lot of Fire Emblem fans, as well as a lot of just strategy RPG fans as well. So, I personally don't really think it looks like a 3DS game, I think it looks, you know, a bit better than that. And I think a lot of people are going to be very pleased with this game as well. Um, so yeah, Fire Emblem Three Houses going to be a great game this summer. I'm very excited for that as well. Um, the, now the two really big surprises aside from Mario Maker that I really enjoyed. Um, let's just talk about Astral Chain for a second because that looks incredible. Looks fantastic. Looks amazing. All other... You know, adjectives of that sort. Throw them all in there. Um, this game, oh my gosh. <laughs> I was like, I kept looking at it. I was like, what is this? What is this game? What is it? When does it come out? And when can I buy it? You know, it's like, it just looks amazing. It's a game developed by Platinum Games, and I pretty much love every single Platinum game uh, that has come out, especially very recently. Of course, you've got Bayonetta, Bayonetta 2. Uh, they did mention Bayonetta 3, they're still working on it, probably might, might not be coming this year, that sucks, but, you know, that's okay, uh, as long as they are still working on it and making it the best that it can be, that's awesome. Um, so you got those games, you've got, um, like, Vanquish, you've got Nier Automata, you've got the wonderful 101, you've got all these really great action hack and slash games, and this one looks, like I said, amazing. Um, basically looks like you have kind of two people on the field at the same time and you looks like you just do some crazy combos with it the graphics look insane uh, I love sort of the futuristic sci-fi art style it looks very cool um, and I think that's gonna be a really cool fit on the switch as well and I actually saw this morning that this is in fact a switch exclusive uh, which is very cool to see exclusives uh, say what you will about them but I, I actually really enjoy exclusives um, you know, just kind of gives the system more, uh, more bang for, bleh, more bang for its buck, I guess. Uh, so that's very cool as well. But just the combat, uh, some of the character models look very good as well. Uh, you know, of course, story is obviously important for you know some of these games. But uh, I think when it comes to platinum games, I think the gameplay is kind of king, and it definitely looks like this is going to be. A, uh, another prime example of that as well. So Astral Chain coming August 30th of this year looks incredible. Day one buy, absolutely. Cannot wait for it. Uh, it's going to be incredible. And then finally, they ended the show with the other huge reveal that I think some people were expecting. I talked about this a little bit in my predictions video yesterday, but we are getting The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. And um, I'll admit, I have not played Link's Awakening. Um, I actually kind of got into the Zelda series a bit late. My first game was actually Twilight Princess, which is kind of embarrassing to say, but it is what it is. So I never played it on the Game Boy. Uh, but this game looks 
awesome. And I know some people were a little upset because the CGI trailer at the beginning showed kind of that unique art style, and then once the gameplay kind of kicked in, it was vastly different from what the trailer was showing. And I mean, yeah, it would have been cool to have, you know, a Zelda game kind of in that art style, like the whole thing in that art style, but I think the look that they went for with this looks very good and very pleasing. Um, it almost looks like little toy figures are, you know, walking around, right? Link almost looks a little bit like a toy, and some people are like, eh, I don't really like the art style, but from what I've seen most places online, a lot of people seem to think that the art style looks very good. And I agree, I think it looks awesome, I think it looks very pleasing, it definitely gives the game its own identity. And so I think a lot of people are going to enjoy it, and I think it almost kind of feels like the Wind Waker effect, right? So when people first saw Wind Waker, it was like, oh my god, what have you done to my Zelda? But then once people got their hands on the game, they absolutely loved it, and a lot of people regard Wind Waker as, you know, their favorite Zelda game to this day. So. I feel like, you know, sometimes the visuals are a little bit off-putting, but I think once you kind of get in and experience the game, the visuals will just kind of meld into the gameplay, which I think will be um, very good for a lot of those people. Uh, but like I said, for, it seems like most people are really <laughs> enjoying the art style. I myself think it looks amazing. I cannot wait for this. They didn't really give us a solid release date. It's supposed to be coming sometime this year. I was hoping we could get at least a month or, you know, even a season <laughs> of the year. Uh, no such luck, but I do hope that it definitely comes sooner than later because it looks incredible and I really want to get my hands on it. And I actually really enjoy the top-down Zeldas, you know, uh, I've been playing uh, A Link to the Past on my SNES Classic. I played the game a little bit when I was a kid, but I never finished it because I never owned it, so I always had to return it to <laughs> Blockbuster, or the, the video rental store. And um, so I never finished it, but I've been playing on the SNES Classic, and then I absolutely adore A Link Between Worlds on the 3DS. It definitely has to be one of my favorite 3DS games, and I, I love every single thing about that game. It's so good. And so to have another game sort of have this top-down perspective, and it looks very similar to those games as well, uh, I'm extremely excited to play it and to get my hands on it. So, Link's Awakening, very cool way to end this awesome and stacked Nintendo Direct. Like I said, I really enjoyed this Direct. There were some games that were kind of like, eh, I don't really care, eh, I'm not going to play that. But, you know, that's going to happen with any kind of Direct, honestly. But the games that were there and the games that did interest me were <laughs> incredible. So, very excited. I do wish that some of these games were kind of coming out you know, sooner in the year. It seems like there were a lot of summer releases, uh, a couple of spring ones here and there. So, I don't know how my wallet is going to handle <laughs> the second half of this year. I might have to rely on Christmas and birthday presents to get some of these games, honestly. But, uh, but yeah, very cool Direct. What did you guys think of the Direct? What were some games that you enjoyed? What were some surprises that you were extremely hyped to see? Um, what were some things that you felt were missing? I know some people were upset that Luigi's Mansion 3 and Animal Crossing weren't really present here, but I, you know, I, I feel like they're saving that for another Direct or even E3, you know? And there's been, you know, talk online that E3 is kind of losing relevancy and whatnot, but that's a whole discussion for another day. But we might even see those games at E3 or even another Direct or something like that. I feel like they, they had all these other games to announce that I, I didn't really care that they weren't you know, there. We, we know that they're allegedly coming this year. I know they told us 2019, and hopefully they do, but there was just so many other games that they, they wanted to throw in here and kind of talk about that I was okay that they, they weren't exactly present here. Um, so anyway, what did you guys think of the Direct? What did you think about some of the announcements? What did you think of the surprises? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say, and let's just talk about video games. You know, that's that's what we're all here for. We all love video games. We all think they're amazing and fantastic and such a great piece of art. And I don't know what my life would be like without video games, honestly. <laughs> they, they're they just such a great thing in my life. And I absolutely love them. And I love playing them. And I love discussing them with others as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. 2019 is going to be stacked. I cannot wait. So yeah, it's going to be great. So thank you guys again. I hope you guys have a, all have a great day. And I will catch you all in the next video. Take care.